Greetings from the great state of Alaska. My name is Dr. G, and today I want to share with you a message of hope. You know, earlier this year we started a, a new study. We began to look at the names of God in the New Testament, or the identity of God in the New Testament. If you've missed any of those studies, I would encourage you to go back and, and look at some of those videos. You know, this week we are looking at a declaration that was made by Jesus in John chapter 11, verse 25. And in this scripture, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. It's a powerful declaration that we see in John chapter 11, verse 25. Matter of fact, we've spent five weeks looking at this identity of God because it is so important in our understanding of God. It's also a hallmark of the hope that you and I have in Jesus Christ. Last week we stumbled upon a second identity that's closely related to this one. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, the Apostle Paul, he refers to Jesus as the first fruits of those risen from the dead. You see, our hope is found in Jesus Christ because he alone has defeated death, hell, and the grave. He single-handedly defeated death, hell, and the grave. And you and I, we will be the next fruits by the grace of God. Amen. We will be the next fruits. Today, I want to tell you how we know that we will be the next fruits. In other words, I want to tell you how you can be sure that you will rise from the dead just like Jesus and have eternal life. You know, the Bible tells us that there is a library in heaven. Did you know that? The Bible tells us there's a library in heaven. And within this library, there is a special record book. This book is referred to as the Book of Life or the Lamb's Book of Life. In fact, there, there are actually six references to the Book of Life in the New Testament. And this morning, if you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to turn to Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. I'll give you a moment to turn there. Hallelujah. Verse 12. Revelation chapter 20, verse 12. It says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. Let's just stop there for one moment. You know, it's interesting that that verse tells us that the books were opened, plural. In other words, there's more than one book. There's many books. I, I would imagine these are record books of some sort because they are referred to during the judgment. And so among those record books, there, there's one very unique book called the Book of Life. Okay, let's, let's pick up in verse 13. It says, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whoever was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown in to the lake of fire. You see, the bottom line is you want your name to be re recorded in the book of life. Amen. You want your name to be recorded in the book of life. If your name is written in this book, you will enjoy the status of being included in the next fruits that we've been talking about. In other words, if your name is written in the book of life, you will spend eternity with Jesus. Revelation chapter 21, it describes our life in heaven. I'm not going to turn there. You're welcome to, to read Revelation chapter 21. 
But Revelation chapter 21, verse 27, I am going to refer to that verse. It says here, chapter 21, verse 27. It says, but nothing unclean will ever enter it, nor anyone who practices an abomination or a lie, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Let me read that last part. But only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. You see, this scripture is telling us who's not going to be in heaven and who is going to be in heaven. This verse also tells me that the owner of the book of life is the Lamb. It's referred to as the Lamb's book of life. Amen. It's the Lamb's book of life. Who is the Lamb? Well, the Bible tells us that Jesus Christ, is the Lamb of God. In John chapter 1, verse 29, John the Baptist, he called Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, the owner of the book of life, the Lamb, is also the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen to me real close right now. Listen close. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ into your heart as Lord and Savior, your name will not be in the Lamb's book of life. You will face eternal damnation. You'll experience what the Bible refers to as the second death. And you'll be cast into the, the lake of fire in hell. It sounds rough. It sounds coarse. And maybe it is, but it's also the truth because the Bible says so. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says that we are all sinners. It says all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. The best one of us, from the Pope down to the, the, the thief in prison or the killer in prison, we're all sinners. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says that the wages... Of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The result, the consequences of our sins is death. It sounds hopeless, doesn't it? But your life doesn't have to end like this. Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the second half of that verse goes on to say, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let me read that again. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. It doesn't say the gift of God is eternal life through our own good works. It doesn't say the gift of God is eternal life by being better than half of the population on earth. It doesn't say anything like that. It says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, when Jesus... In John chapter 14, when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, he was saying unequivocally, I am the only way. I am the only truth. I am the only life. He didn't say, I am one of the ways. He said, I am the way. You know, God has provided a plan of salvation for you and I. It's an expensive plan of salvation because the plan of salvation cost God his only begotten son. It cost him a lot. And so the plan of salvation is centered around Jesus Christ. Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God, He was killed and crucified on a cruel cross to bear the penalty for our sins. Why did He do this? He did this because He loves us. It's a sacrificial kind of love. You know, Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Today, if, if you'd like assurance that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, let me implore you to call upon the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 10, verse 8, 13, it says, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. All. I want to invite you right now to pray with me. 
and invite Jesus into your heart. Okay, let's pray together. Dear Lord, I admit that I'm a sinner. I know that on my best day, I am still a sinner. And I know that my sins will doom me to an eternal hell. But I also know and I acknowledge that you died on the cross for those sins. I know that when you died on the cross, you took on the penalty of my sins so that I could live eternally with you. And so right now, I, I believe that you died for me personally. I believe that you have taken my sins and bore my punishment and that you have given me your righteousness in exchange. I believe what the Bible says, that if I put my trust and my faith in you, that I would be born again, that I would become a new creature, a new creation. And so, Lord, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord, to be my Savior, and I will follow you all the days of my life. I will follow you because you are my shepherd. I will follow you because you are my Lord and my Savior. And I know that on my final day here on earth, when I close my eyes and take my last breath, at that point in time, I will cross over into eternity. And that my name will be written in the Lamb's book of life because I have trusted in you. Right now, Jesus, I ask you to accept me into your family. And by your grace, O oh God, I will be saved. Amen. Amen. If you've said that prayer today, I want to welcome you into the family of God. God loves you so much. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's what this is all about. When, when we are opening up the Bible, when we are looking at the Word of God and allowing God to speak to us, there is a transformation that happens, and, and we become more and more in tune with Jesus. Our relationship with Jesus grows. But it's important that if you've said that prayer today, that you also find a good church, that you find a good church family where you can uh, be rooted and, and begin to grow in your faith. It's important that you begin to pray and that you have fellowship and communion with God. It's important that you read your Bible every day, not out of duty or, or out of a religious experience, but that you read the Bible because you want to hear from God. And he speaks through his word. His word is alive today. He speaks through his word. And so I just pray that God's presence goes before you, that the Holy Spirit of God would begin to do a mighty work in your life. God bless you.